resultant force vector applications. A 30 kilogram mobile is suspended from a ceiling by two hooks 50 centimeter apart. The mobile is attached to the hooks by two pieces of string, one 40 centimeter and the other 30 centimeter in length. Find the tension in each string. Well, this is a very unique question here. Now here you'll notice that we have not given you angles, but we have given you lengths, right? So side lengths are given for all the strings. So let's read the question once again and refer to the diagram, which I've already sketched for you and see how it represents the question. So what we have here, two hooks are at these positions, which are 50 centimeter apart. And these are the two strings by which the mobile 30 kilogram is attached, right? So let's look into the question. A 30 kg mobile is suspended from a ceiling by two hooks 50 centimeter apart. So these are the two hooks. They are 50 centimeter apart. And here we have a 30 kilogram mobile attached, right? Now, you know, Every mass of kilogram, one, exerts a force of 9.8 newtons downwards. So 30 kilogram is equal to 30 times 9.8, which is 294 newtons. So a 30 kilogram mobile will exert a downward force of 294 newtons. So that is first thing which you should Right, so convert your mass into the force. Force of attraction due to the gravity of the earth, correct? The next half is the mobile is attached to the hooks by two pieces of string, one 40 centimeter and the other 30 centimeter in length. So these are the two strings, 40 centimeter and 30 centimeter, right? find the tension in each string. So I'm saying let the tension in each string be T1 and T2, correct? So that is the starting and so we have a position graph. So we call this a position diagram, right? Let me write here. So we have a position diagram here. Which represents the situation. Now as you see, there is a triangle here whose three sides are known to us. We let these angles be alpha, beta and theta. Using the three sides in a triangle, we can use cosine law and find the angles, right? So as a first part, let, let's first find the angles alpha, beta and theta and then we will continue, okay? You can see the sides are like 3, 4 and 5, so it could be a right triangle, correct? So that will make our problem a bit simpler. So let's look for the angles. Let's say theta. So theta equals to, we'll use cosine law, cos inverse of 40 square plus 30 square minus 50 square, right? The right opposite side, right? So you could, you could write 30 square first of 40 square minus 50 square, right? divided by 2 times product of 30 and 40. 2 times 30 and 40, correct? And use your calculator. <clears throat> so we get second function cos within brackets. We have 30 square plus 40 square minus 50 square Now you have to divide by, now I did a mistake here. So let's do it again because I had to put two brackets right in the very beginning because when you divide, the numerator should have been in brackets. So let's do it again, right? So we have second function, cos inverse, put two brackets. First bracket outside, then another bracket. Then we have 30 square plus 40 square minus 50 square 
bracket close and now you divide by you can put this in bracket if you want to 2 times 30 times 40 2 brackets closed equals to so we get 90 degrees so we get theta equals to 90 degrees right it was important for me to put two brackets otherwise I get an error let me show you here so the top portion should be in a bracket do you see that and then you divide by this and then the final bracket so that way you get the right answer otherwise you'll get a wrong answer correct now let's find what angle alpha is so angle alpha will be cos inverse of within brackets so when we are looking into this angle then the best thing is these two sides get added up squares right and that one gets subtracted so add these up that is we write 50 square plus 40 square minus opposite side is 30 that becomes negative right and the denominator it is product of the sides which are close right 2 times 40 times 50 right bracket close so again don't forget two brackets in this position right so we do this calculation second function cos inverse two brackets 50 square plus 40 square minus 30 square one bracket close divide by 2 times 40 times 50 another bracket close equal to so we get our answer and which is 37 degrees correct so so we got 90 degrees for theta and alpha is 37 degrees so we can write what beta could be right so beta could be total sum is 180 so it is 180 degrees minus 90 minus 37 degrees correct that gives us the answer 53 degrees so now we get all the three angles correct so now it's like a problem which we did earlier we know the angles now what we need to find is the tension right so for that let me now sketch the vector diagram correct how to sketch vector diagram so that is another exercise which we need to do well let me put the angles here so theta is 90 so we get 90 degrees here and alpha is 37 so this is 37 and this is 53 let me write 53 here right I'm purposely writing angles here with this horizontal line and I'll use this reference to make my vector diagram so vector diagram let me use a okay a different ink here so we'll make vector diagram right here so let's say this is our reference point so I mean this point correct so from here what I can do is I can draw this line okay so so from here we are drawing first T1 so here we are this is T1 And we know the angle here is 37 degrees okay now we will draw that is T1 let me write T1 here now let me draw T2 parallel to this that means like this do you see that coming correct so we'll draw this T2 and let me use this ink saying well this is my T2 but I'll perfectly start from here like this T2 right so that is T2 for me and this angle as you can see with the horizontal is 53 degrees you see that now this is the force which is acting downwards and the force which will be right opposite this force and equal to it will bring the system into equilibrium correct and therefore my force which will bring it to equilibrium will be acting in the opposite direction so let me write draw that force here from this point to that correct and this force as we calculated is equal to 294 newtons correct so that becomes the vector diagram 
for the given situation. Let me extend this line. Correct. So this will make 90 degrees. Correct. So if it is 90 degrees, then what is this angle? This angle is 90 minus 37, which is 53. In our case, we are getting the same angle because this is itself 90 degrees, right? When we add that up, correct? That is why. Now here, this angle is 90 minus 53, that is 37 degrees, right? That is T1 and this is T2. We call this vector diagram. Correct? So this vector diagram represents our forces, correct? In this case, tension. Now from here, we can find the tension, correct? So, since this is a 90 degree angle, normally we'll use sine law, correct? But sine of 90 is 1, correct? So, well, if you want to write, no problem. So it is 90, you can use that, but otherwise it is a right triangle, correct? So in a right triangle, if this is my triangle, that is the hypotenuse. This is angle 37. So sine of 37 is what? Sine of 37 is opposite over hypotenuse, T1 over 294. So that implies that T1 is equal to 294 times sine of 37 degrees, correct? So we can use calculator and find 294 times sine of 37 degrees and get it ourselves 176.9. So 294 times sine of 37 degrees will give us 176.94. So I'll write it as 174, 177. So that becomes 177 for me. Correct? And I'll write units as Newtons. Correct? Similarly, T2 will be equal to... So similarly, so now we can find T2. So T2, if you see this is the right triangle, correct? So T2 is opposite to angle 53. So T2 is equals to 294 times sine of 53. <coughs> so we get here 294 times sine of 53. That gives us 234.79. So I'll write 235. 235 Newton. So I've rounded my answers to the whole numbers. Well, the question is not specifying and since all the dimensions given to us are whole numbers, right? 294 and 30, 50, 40. So I prefer to do a whole number here, right? So that is how we are going to get the solution of this problem, correct? Now in normal cases, when this angle is not a 90 degree, you have to use the sine law, correct? Well, sine of 90 is 1, so it is as good as sine law. So, I hope you understand and appreciate this. This question is unique in the sense that we have not given you angles, only the sides are given to you. So, you find the angles first using cosine law, as we did, from the position diagram, and then translate that into a vector diagram. And once you have a vector diagram, use sine law. So basically you have to use sine law which effectively we use. So after that use sine law. Correct? And get your answers. Correct? So our answers are T1 is equals to 177 newtons and T2 equals to 235 newtons. Correct? Thank you.